Hello, if you're wanting to build a location archive that has an interactive map that you can drag around where you can have customers zoom in where it only shows that listing uh, on the list based off what's in the map or if you want them to be able to maybe just search for maybe their location, their city, their address check out this training, it's going to walk you through how to do all of this using Bricks Builder and WP Grid Builder and also Metabox. So let's say I live in the town, maybe uh, maybe between these three locations here. If I live in Shelbyville, and I don't need to be, so let me zoom back out. Zoom back out where we're seeing all of these locations. Let me type in Shelbyville, Indiana. Click on that. Okay, I guess there's no locations within 25 miles, but is there anything within 50 miles? There we go. Uh, the one in Indianapolis is the nearest one. So if you want to know how to build this for yourself or for your clients, um, watch this training. I go through the entire process of laying out this page as a template in bricks and also adding the, the map facet over here, you know, searching for locations, including a load more, and even designing this in the template as well with a two column grid here. And obviously it clicks to the location page um, as well. So if this is something that interests you, keep on watching and make sure to subscribe so you get other great new videos, great new training like this. Thanks. All right, we're going to jump right into it. If you haven't already, you'll need to set up a custom post type for locations. And I'll, I'll just glance at the settings, but in a previous video, I did go over setting these up. But just uh, as a refresher to confirm you have it all set up correctly, go to Metabox, custom post or post types, and then location, and then check that uh, labels doesn't matter but this here does matter so make sure we have the right options checked choose an icon if you prefer and we need to make sure this is checked enables uh, post type archives needs to be checked and then for the supports you know we don't need anything there and we're not using any taxonomies either so this is all created in the, in the other training about creating up a location page so this video we're going to go about creating the archive page with a map facet with a map that filters and shows how to do this so the first thing we're going to do is create our templates go to bricks templates and then we already have our locations here I'm going to rename this uh, to locations single location and then we're going to add a new um, this doesn't really matter, but I do kind of like when these names do relate to each other. So I'm going to change this to um, just single location. And then update. And hopefully that didn't break anything. Um, if it did, we'll, we'll find out real quickly. We'll just go to locations here and just check out this location to see if it did break anything. And no, it looks does not look like it did. All right. So now let's click add new and this is going to be our archive. So locations um, archive. And then we're going to click publish. And then after that's done saving, oops, forgot one thing. Okay. So this popped up and prompted us to. So select the type of template we want to create. This is going to be a uh, archive down here. So click that, and let's just hit save, just to make sure that's saved. Okay, now let's lay out our, um, our archive here. So the first thing I want to do is add a section to, for our header section. Um, I'm just going to do these one at a time. So in our, our header, I'm just going to call this hero. And then we're going to have a container. And then we're going to have a uh, heading in there. And that's actually it for this hero section, except that I do want to make this a header element. Now I can't change the HTML tag to header because if I do, it loses our, our ACSS padding. And you'll see the example here. As soon as I type something in here, I, I, we, we lose our, uh, our padding there because the padding is set to an HTML tag of section. So in order to get around this, we need to wrap this in a div and make this div a custom HTML tag of header. 
and then I'm gonna call this hero wrapper. So I've got my hero here, got my container. Let's go ahead and add our classes to this. So for the hero here, I'm gonna call this location archive hero. And then for a container, we're gonna call that location hero, sorry, location archive. Hero container, and then our heading location archive hero heading. All right, let's style this for the background. Let's make sure we're on our class. Let's give it a background color, um, maybe just of of base. So for that, let's go to our ACSS primary not primary, global, and then click on our base. And since that's the same as our text color, we wanna change that as well. So if I go to, um, if I stay on this section and go to typography and change the color to maybe shade ultra light, didn't change anything, but then if I go to heading and go to typography and if I go to raw and then type in current color, uh, it will pick up the color we've selected in the section above there. Uh, now we do want this to be centered, so on our container here, and did I did I for sure style? No, okay, I did not style our class, so we're gonna do that over, select our class, and set this to current color, okay? And for our container, make sure we have our class selected, and let's make, center this. Okay, good, I like that. Now. We've got our hero section done. Um, let's create our body section next. So I'm gonna collapse all of this here and then add a new section. And this is gonna be our body. And then we are gonna have a container here and we're gonna have two divs in this container because on the le left side, we're gonna have our, uh, our information and then on the other side, we're gonna have our map. Uh, okay. So over here, let's start, uh, let's bring in our, we're gonna have a heading, we're gonna have text. We have basic text. Actually, no, I'm gonna make it rich text so that we can, uh, so we can type in, you know, maybe, maybe we wanna add a link or maybe we want to, I don't know, add some fancy text. Let's, let's make that rich text instead. So delete our basic text here. We have a rich text, and then what else do we need? Um, we need our search because we're going to have a list of locations, and then our search uh, or our search above that. So let's just um, we need our facet before we can do that. So I guess we'll add a short code for it because uh, we'll bring that in with a short code. We we'll just type in short code, and this will be for our our search short code. And then after that is where we're gonna have our listing of um, locations. But we need that to be in a grid. So we're gonna add another div. And then we're gonna, inside this div is where we're going to have our, uh, the actual location showing up with a query loop. And we're gonna use a heading for that, heading three. And then below this div, we're gonna have another, uh, facet for either load more or maybe pagination. So let's add another short code for that. We're putting our placeholder for the short code. And where did that go? There we go. Okay, now I put it inside the div. I don't want it in the div. I want it to be below the div. Below our list of locations. And I think that's it for this for this section over here. Then on the other side here, this is gonna be our map wrapper and then our map element. Uh, and that also is going to be with a short code. So for that as well, we're just gonna drop in a short code. Uh, okay, so now let's start naming these so they make sense. So we got our hero, uh, we got our body. This is our, our, our container where everything's in, our heading. Let me just rename this here to inner. 
uh, and this is for our information or, or, or content. That's our heading, our text. This is our uh, search short code. So I'll just, I'll just do short code search. Actually, I'll just do search facet. And then this is our grid, locations grid. And this is our heading, and I'll just put in um, query loop. And this is our um, load more facet. Load more facet, and this is our map wrapper. And this is our uh, map facet. Okay. All right, let's start adding classes, and then uh, we'll start laying laying this out a little bit more. So container, we've got body first. So this is going to be location body, location archive body, location archive body. Then we have location archive body uh, container. And then our inner here. I'm just double check, make sure I got this uh, container. Yeah, inner. We'll call this inner wrapper. And maybe we could maybe have called it info wrapper instead. We got our heading here. Location body. Location archive. Body heading and text. Yeah, let's give this a class as well. Location archive. I think we'll just call it search. Uh, maybe search wrapper because I'm not sure what all elements this is going to bring in. So let's call it search wrapper. Whoa. Something crazy happened there. Search wrapper. And then we've got our locations grid. Location, archive, body, location, locations, grid, because this is for the locations. I think that makes sense. And then we actually have our, uh, what we're going to be uh, repeating or using as a query loop is our, we're going to use a heading for this. this is going to be the list of locations that show up. So location, archive, body, location. And we've got our load more down here. So let's call this location archive body load load more should we load more wrapper again um, to keep in line with our our search wrapper I think I think so load more wrapper then we got our map wrapper location archive body map map wrapper and then our map facet location body location archive body map okay now let's start styling this a little bit for sure let's get our layout down uh, we will fine-tune it once we start actually get the facets working and bring in some information so first off let's go to we've got our body here uh, and then our container so for our container we want that to be a I think I'm just going to use utility classes to turn this into a uh, a five grid. Actually, maybe 50-50. Let, let me see. Um, I was messing around with this earlier. Let's just do a 50-50 for right now, and then we may want to adjust it. So I've got my container here. Or actually, it doesn't matter because I'm going to add a new class. So I'm going to type in um, grid two. Yeah, grid two. And let's add a gap right away, um, gap XXL, and let's stretch everything. So 
stretch, okay? Now for the inner here, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add uh, gap, I'm gonna add row gap, let's go with, not auto, let's go with var space M to start with, and then once we get more information here, we can, you know, change the styling as we need to. So that's, I think, let's make sure we have this, uh, this should be an H2. Um, this should be an H3, which it is by default. So I am a heading, let's change that to, um, Maybe, so up here, this is probably going to be, I guess let's style this first. This is going to be an H, H1 if I do that. Let's just, let's call this um, locations. And it could have the company name in it. Company name locations. Uh, it could be our locations. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it at locations. And if this is just offices, you know, that could say offices. Or if this is a grid for, like you could use the same setup for dealers or for, re, um, maybe you're a wholesaler and you have retail locations, other businesses that are selling your product and you could have um, retail locations or maybe there's a better word for that. But you know, this could be, it doesn't just have to be your own company locations or the, the client's company locations. So just keep it simple, we're just call it locations. And for the subheading here, um, heading to, we could say um, company name, locations across the country. Um, it kind of depends, you know, if this is a national company, you could say that. If it's just in your state, you could say locations in Indiana or wherever that might be. So down here, I think I'm going to say, um, locations across the country you know and change that to make that work and, and make sense and here you could say um, let, let me look what I wrote in the original blueprint I think that could be a little helpful so in the original blueprint I just wrote click on a location below to get address, phone, and contact information. So we'll go with that for now. You know, we could restyle that if we want to. I really want to do want to get some, some accurate, do some more styling after we get more information in here. But we can set up the query loop for right now. Um, Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know, so I can't, I can't make a query loop just with a heading. Okay, so I need to wrap it in a, a grid. So this is my overall grid where I want to show probably either two or three column of the locations. So we need to wrap this first. So this is actually not a query loop here. So let me, let's wrap this in a div. And so this is going to be, uh, we'll just call this location. We'll call this location. This is going to be our location. And this is actually the query loop. And then this is our heading. So we'll need to rename our classes a little bit. So uh, that's not the class on this element. This element is going to be um, location archive sorry location I don't why can't I remember location archive body um, location heading I guess so, we'll go with that. And this this up here is gonna be our location archive body location uh, right here. Okay, 
Now for our, now now we can make this a uh, we, we can use query loop here. So let's grab that and our post uh, post is correct, and then we're going to choose locations and we just leave that for right now. Uh, I only have one location, so we're going to add some more locations as well, so we can test out the facets then too. Now for the name, we want dynamic data. We want to query the post, uh, not the post title. Okay, let's go over and look at locations here. So if we go over to locations, so obviously here's the title, but here's the location name. And that's what I want to use. I'm probably not gonna use the title for a whole lot of things, um, but we're gonna, let's, do, let's use the location name. So for that we need to, we can just start typing it in, location, uh, I think it's right here, location name. Yeah, location name, let's save. And then let's go look at this on on the front preview mode. So company name, city. Now let's add some more locations just so we kind of have a sense about how this is all working. Um, and I should change this and I should actually add a, a city so it makes sense, right? So let's call this Indianapolis. Let's update that. Um, and instead of sample location one, let me just change this to Indianapolis. If I can even spell it right. Indianapolis. And then let's add a new one. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna choose cities, probably mostly from Indiana. So let's choose uh, Elkhart. And so this here, Elkhart. And I do need to fill all this stuff out. So let me just let me real quickly copy some of this from from another page. Just give them all the same hours. Okay, let's add let's add three. That will give us a good um, a good testing. So Elkhart, let's also do maybe let's do Bremen. That's a small town uh, in Indiana. Bremen, okay. Okay, now we got three locations. Perfect. I think I need to edit this. Uh, I don't know if that's a real address. I, I do want to use a real address. So let's just. Sometimes if I'm, if I'm trying to find dummy addresses, uh, I'll use the post office address or maybe a library. You know, something that almost every town would have. So let me just look for a library in Indianapolis. Update. So now over here we should start seeing a couple different locations. There we go. So we've got three different locations showing up. Uh, we don't have a map yet, and we don't have a search, and we don't have a load more in case there are more locations. Um, in fact, in order to get the load more to work, we should maybe add five locations to be able to test that accurately. So 
with that in mind, let's create some that are maybe in a, uh, a different city. So let's add some, or a di different state, I mean. Um, let's add one in, let's add Cincinnati and Louisville. Those are all around Indiana, but you know, not quite in the state. And I do have that information, so it won't take me long to get that added. So let's add the Cincinnati one. All right, there we go. Now publish. Okay. Now let's go check out how many locations we've got now. All right, we got five locations there. That's perfect. Um, next, what should we do? Should we do the the search facet? I think so. Let's do the search facet, and then I'm gonna show you, this took me quite a bit of time to, to figure out and to, to get it working right. So I'll show you what I did initially and how it didn't quite work. Um, but let's first limit this maybe to three, to three listings. That way we can better visualize how the load more is working and uh, um, test that. Load more or or next. So to do that, we need to create our uh, we need to create our uh, facet. So I'm gonna get out of here and let's go to. Oh, I don't. I don't even have it installed. Okay. I didn't. We need to install WP Grid Builder. It's incredible how powerful it is. And once you have it set up, uh, it just works. Their documentation is not always easy to find which is why I think this video is going to be really helpful. So if this is being helpful, hopefully it's been helpful already. But as we continue going on, please give a like. Um, please subscribe if you, if you haven't already. And drop a comment below, maybe with plans, how you plan to use this. So I'm going to pull this off screen to install WP Grid Builder. Um, this is where, you know, this is their website, pricing. Um, it's it's worth it you know forty nine dollars a year if you have some clients you know this is well well worth it you'll be impressing clients with this locations archive um, and you can use it for a lot more than just locations you can use it for your you know blog for products for a lot of different things all right so I'm gonna go off camera off screen to install this and then we'll be uh, back uh, once once grid builder is installed and activated all right, got that installed, um, and now we're ready to start setting these facets to work. Now I'm gonna make some purposeful mistakes along the way, because sometimes the way you think something should work doesn't quite work that way. So you would let's let's start with our search facet. Um, so I have uh, so yeah, this is, this is our our archive here. Let's go let's go back here. Okay, this is back to our builder. Let's go, we need to go back to WordPress, back to the dashboard, and add our uh, facet. And it's basically just a way to filter. So I have Grid Builder here now, so I can click on it. And uh, click on Facets. And then choose, um, well, let's do Search. So choose, and the, after you do this uh, the first time, it'll look a little bit different than this. So We'll see how that looks, but the first time, this is, this is how it looks. So we're gonna create a search, and then, let's say import data. Oh, there we go. Never mind, create, a, create facet. So for our name here, uh, for our name here, let's just call it, locations search. And then we can give it a title if we want to. Uh, I think I'll just, yeah, let's just do search locations. And then we can change that if we want to. So I'm gonna hit save. And now it's going to behavior here. And then leave it on filter and then look for search over here. And then for the placeholder here, we can, we can leave it blank. We can type in search locations. And then we leave that on WordPress uh, let's do instant search so that as we're typing in, it will filter out. So let's hit save changes. And now let's, um, 
let's create our other fat or let's create our load more facet as well so let's go back to all facets and then create facet again and this time we're going to say locations load more uh, and then for our title there we can change that as well to maybe load more lo locations um, actually, let's just do load more load more and let's hit save and for our behavior leave it on um, or no, don't leave it click on load and then we can do pagination if we want to I was planning on doing the load more and then because we have so few items let's just change this to one so that we can see it as it comes in and then we can change the button label to load more locations And since we were doing capitalization here, let's just capitalize this again. Save changes. All right, so now we have our our facets. Um, we need this short code. Let's do our search. Let's add our, our search facet first. So the short code is right here. I can just click on it. And then let's go to our builder. So back in bricks, I'm just going to open this up. Well, we can jump back and forth. Um, let's go to templates and then our locations archive edit with bricks all right so here's the short code that I put in that we wanted to use for search so I, let's just go and just paste it in here um, and then here it says the grid ID is zero to be filtered so so our zero here that's not not working right there's a mistake there there's a problem there um, I reached out to to grid builder support for help and they actually pointed me to an article by uh, Bricks Lab and the Bricks Lab article was incredibly helpful in making WP grid builder work with bricks and it does work it's going to be and, and once you understand how to do it, it it's not messy um, there are some steps that need to be going through but it's not messy so here is this article um, I'll link it in the video below, but this is incredibly helpful in setting up facets to use with Bricks Query Loop, and it does work. It, it works incredible. So I'm I'm using this as a reference, or I, I did use this as a reference to figure out how to make it work because out of the box, it doesn't just automatically work. You can see here we're getting we're getting an error saying that you know the ID. Uh, ID one, like something's wrong. It's like grid ID zero uh, is not valid. That's what it's saying. So, thankfully, it's actually pretty simple to to get this to work. So, what we need to do is we basically need to give the 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 wrapper our query loop needs to have a special class name, and we're going to use that class name here in our grid. Uh, grid equals so for location grid we're gonna go and give this a and it needs to start with WPGB content so it needs to start with WPGB WP grid builder content and so since we're gonna use this throughout the site I'm just gonna call this location locations grid and now I need to go back to this search facet uh, over here that we just created and I need to change the grid equals to that same class. So I type in um, WPG, I should have copied it, WordPress grid builder dash content dash locations grid. Okay, now let's hit save and it disappeared here but let's go in, the, but we're no longer getting an error. Let's go in the front here and just refresh. Okay, so now I've got my uh, search box here. Let me just type in Bremen. Okay, still not working. Um, it, it did change the address bar here, but it's not changing my results down here. So, you know, why, why is that? Well, there, it ends up there's a couple other things we need to do yet. So this is, number one, this is a custom post type. So we actually need to go into, uh, into the WP Grid Builder settings and we need to change something. So I'm just going to go back to the dashboard. 
when you go into the grid builder here into settings and then under under general there is a setting for custom fields filter custom content that needs to be enabled so hit save okay and then I believe there's one other thing yeah there's one other, one other thing we need to do we need to create uh, <laughs> It seems kind of ridiculous, but right before, right before this locations grid, we need to add another short code. So click the plus there, add a short code, and then we don't want it to be after. It needs to be up here. I'm going to add it before this grid I created here. And uh, where'd it go? Yeah, right here. So let's just call it. Um, it's kind of like a. Uh, what, what would they call it? A custom query short code. Um, maybe, maybe that's what we'll just call it. Custom. It is for it is for WP Grid Builder in particular. WP Grid Builder custom query. Well, let's just call it that. Custom query. And in here we need to type in. I'm actually going to copy it over from uh, over from. Bricks Labs website. So here's kind of like the default one, but then we we need to change it a little bit to match what we're doing. So the ID here needs to match what I just created. Uh, what I made, where is it at now? The, the custom class I added. It needs to match that. So WP content dash locations grid. All right. Now let's hit save. And now let's go over here and refresh. And now let's try. Okay, it actually remembered my search here, which is why it's just showing Bremen. So it is working. But let's go back. Let's hit enter. Okay, it's not showing all of them. So now if I type in Elkhart, it just shows Elkhart. If I type in um, uh, maybe IN was just going to show the ones with IN in the name. Yeah, so so now that's working. So now let's add our load more facet. Let's go back to back to our facets here. Where are we at? Facets and grab our load more facet. So now we did a lot of the hard work, so we don't have to do obviously all those steps again. So I'm here in the load more facet, pasting this short code. I do need to change, you know, the zero. For WPG grid builder uh, dash content, and then whatever that custom, yeah, whatever that class is, um, locations grid, okay. And by default, it's showing all five of these, so it's not even gonna, it's not gonna show up. So if I, if I go hit refresh here, we won't see anything. But if I go limit our query loop let's limit it to three so query loop post per page let's change this to three and then let's hit save and now if we come back refresh so by default it shows three and now we have our load more so I can click and it's just gonna add one at a time and as soon as there's no more to load that just kinda goes away we're gonna change our styling there but since we're in the grid builder world let's just let's stay in that world and get the functionality of everything working and uh, the search here is actually not going to work with our map so we actually need to change something something a little bit here for it to, for it to work with our map and that's what we're gonna do next let's get our map facet working as well so let's start uh, we need to actually install an add-on for Grid Builder. Um, so if we go to Add-ons and then go down to the uh, Map Facet, and then Activate. Okay, it just gives some few more options. Now if we go to All Facets, if we click uh, Create New Facet is what we want, and for this one here, we're going to call it. I'm just double checking here, make sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, to keep our same, we're talking about locations. So locations, map. And for the title, um, 
when you hit to uh, view locations on map and the title I don't think we're actually even going to display it so hit save and behavior this is really important so by default it's still just doing our filter in the checkbox which we actually haven't even created one like that but now what we want we want filter and then we do have some new um, filter types added since we installed the add-on namely the map uh, geolocation I think just those two but for this for this here we want map and then we want to choose custom field and then we want to look for our address on the custom post that we created right and that was called let's just look that up that let's go to metabox uh, post types open this up in a new tab and location sorry the custom fields is what I want custom fields for location and so we've got location address and in there we've got address line one city state zip etc so in my head I'm thinking I want address line one that's why I want to pull up well, let's see what happens let's look for address no results found okay rather than go into all the steps it takes to find out what the problem is what the actual problem is is that we need to create a new field here that WP Grid Builder can actually find which is not an address field but is a uh, longitude latitude field and it's actually really easy to do um, just create a new add, add, add new field type and type in map and what we want we want Google Maps and this will actually it'll actually show where it'll it'll uh, it'll give WP Grid Builder the longitude latitude um, of the location of the, of the location up here of address line one there's a couple caveats to that and I'm just gonna again just pull up my my testing site where I was doing this to make sure I don't miss anything okay so let's uh, let's change our name from number one remember how we always call things uh, location um, I guess we didn't for that did we we just did city but the ID is location map so this is specific for Google map so I'm just gonna call this uh, Google Google Maps and then down here let's just call this location underscore underscore Google Maps and the type is Google Maps um, location address zip I guess I did location address didn't I so let's do location address Google Maps sure uh, type okay what else do we have here okay I need to punch in my API key. You, you'll be able to see it, um, but I'll just have to go change it. So it doesn't really matter. Default location, we can leave that blank. Okay, this is really important. Address field. So where where is uh, this map? Is it's it's going to show longitude, latitude, but where is it pulling information from? It's pulling it from address line one. And if that's not specific enough, we can even get it, you know, we can add a, a comma and we can add the city and the state as well, but usually this is all that's needed. So location, address line one, and that's all we have to do. So then we can scroll up and hit save or update. And now if we go to our locations, And click on doesn't matter Louisville down here at the bottom we're gonna have that map and it's not something um, I, I can't punch in my, it, it's pulling from this address here so if I change this number it will change the, the dropper but I can also drag this dropper around and the dropper is longitude latitude it, it's it's initially based off this address but then if I pull it around obviously it's gonna be a different different location and into we'll, we'll look at that later then um, I'm not gonna save that. I'm gonna refresh. So we're back where we were. Um, actually, let's just double test that. So let me just say, let me just drag this over close to the Walmart. I'm gonna hit update. 
I think that stays over by the Walmart then. Yeah, it stays by the Walmart. Now, I'm not sure how I actually clear this out. Maybe just by changing the address here. So let me just, let me just copy that. And let's just say we want, uh, let's, do, let's do a totally different address. Um, let's do, can we look up Outback Steakhouse? Cool, in Mishawaka, all right. And so now it updates it over here. So, and if I do, if I hit save, it's gonna be, it's gonna stay where that's at. So it's gonna look at the address and move the marker. If the marker, uh, if the address hasn't changed, the marker's gonna stay where it was dropped to. So I'm gonna go back here. And now we're back to where we were, so update. That was a little bit of a bunny trail, uh, but I was kinda curious how that was working and, you know, maybe, it probably actually doesn't matter because locations, the address matters, but where the dropper is, you know, isn't, it, it could matter in some cases, I guess. It, it could matter. Anyway, getting off topic, let's get back on topic. Now let's create our facet for the map. So we have this created in our custom fields for the custom post type. So let's go back to our facets over here. Oh, I, I guess I, I was, was actually in there. So behavior. Um, I didn't save it, unfortunately. So filter and then map and then custom field. All right, I'm just looking over here at my at my map, make sure I don't miss anything. Okay, so we have map selected. We want custom field, post type. And now if I type in um, map, it finds uh, map facet, map coordinates. And that's not correct. Um, let me try it saving and then refreshing. Okay, I should be seeing Metabox custom fields for Google Maps, and I'm not seeing that. Maybe we need to just check out a little more here in Grid Builder settings. Let's uh, let's go back here. I'm just going to compare this to what I had previously done. That looks good. Yeah, it all looks right. So why am I not seeing? Why am I not seeing the correct field over in my map facet? Locations map. Got map here, custom field. I'm really confused. Okay, I wonder, uh, I'd pause the video and I'm, I'm back now. I, I wonder if the problem that I'm not finding this is because I have that custom field in a group. And when I was testing it earlier, um, I didn't have it in a group. So let's just try that real quick. I know Bricks Builder had, had a problem, has a bug right now where it can't look at data inside of a, a group in Metabox field. So let's just change that. Let's go to Metabox. Um, custom fields, location, and let's change, we're basically just gonna recreate this outside of this, we're just gonna create a new field out here. So Google Maps, um, Google Maps, location address, Google Maps. Yeah, I need to type it, bring in my API key for that. Um, let me see if I can paste that in. And then the address field, I want that location address line one. And then I'm gonna delete, and I'll just rename this one. I'll just call this two, so that it doesn't get confused. And I'll just hit save or update. Now let's go back to Back to our locations. 
So we'll actually have two maps showing up, yeah. But they should be should be showing the same thing, but they're not. Because uh, we're pulling from the same address, right? But this one is not. Let's go back. What's going on? Does it change? If I change the address up here, does it uh, change something else? So if we look for, uh, again, that's not what I want to do. I want to copy that. And if I type in, uh, well, sure, I guess that works. Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. That changes. This does not change. So something's not quite right. Maybe I do need to delete this field. Maybe it can't look you know, from both fields. Let's go. I'll hit save and go back back to our custom fields location map that's the ID location address Google Maps I think this is this is right location address line one Language, region required. I think it's because this field is probably in is using data from the field up here. So I'm just going to delete this. And now we're going to update. Go back to locations. Go back to Louisville, and it's still not working right. What happens if I move this around over to the, the church over here? Hit update. Okay. What if I change the address to that? Did it update our map? No. Okay, it's almost. But okay, so so this, this is messed up. I do want to go back to Grid Builder and just see if it is uh, now seeing this Google Map. So locations map is where we were at, and now if I go down to custom field, do I have Google? Okay, I might need to erase a big chunk of this and figure out what's going on while well, my custom fields are not, not showing up. Because I'm not, something, something's not right. So I'm pausing the video, when I come back, I might have to backtrack quite a ways. Okay, it just came to me. Uh, I'm an idiot. Here's the problem. In Metabox, there's an add-on for Uh, no, in Grid Builder, there's an add, there's an add-on for MetaBox. So, and I forgot to enable that. So that's why we're not seeing fields from, from, uh, yeah. So add-ons, MetaBox install. And activate. And now I'm gonna go back and just repair kind of what I had done by by going through um, I think I'm going to take this all out of the video so that's active now let's go back to Metabox custom fields let's fix what we've done because what we've done was bad so location I'm going to grab my key here and then delete this. Um, and then I want to go to location address and add our Google Maps here. Google Maps, I'm going to call it Google 
maps and here we're going to call it location google maps location location address google maps and need our key this is location address line one all right update go back to locations Uh, where are we at? Locations. Go back to Louisville. That's working again. Let's just say we did have a different one. Let's say we're at uh, Nebraska something. Nebraska, USA. That's updated. Cool. Let's go back to where we were. Nice. I don't even need all of that. I'm just gonna, this is actually how we originally were. Update. Now let's go to our Grid builder, let's close out some of these things. Uh, close that, close that. That's what we were looking at to test. This is our bricks builder. Let's get out of the bricks builder too. We, there we go. Now let's go back to grid builder and let's finish, finish uh, you know, taking care of this here. So all facets, locations map, behavior. In the drop down now, if we search for Google Maps, we have Metabox, perfect. API type, let's keep on going down here. Uh, I do need to type in the Google API key again, so, so grab that, paste it in. And map filtering, it's up to you. It basically means if you move, you can drag the map around and you can filter based on that. Um, so you probably want that. If someone would zoom in on the map, you know, just show the ones that are visible on the map. Map results. Um, you you can mess around with these settings here, but I had to, I had set I had it set to display all markers. And then the map style roadmap is probably the best one. You know, do you want it to be a square? What kind of ratio do you want? Uh, ours is probably going to be close to being square. Let's just try that. One to one. You can add points of interest. Probably don't really want that because it might distract from you know, the locations that you have there. You can turn on a couple different options there. I'd probably just leave that blank. We have a default zoom that we can change. Let's change this to maybe 12. And the minimum zoom, go four. And then what else do we have here? You know, Panda search. Actually, I might've been wrong. Panda search, I think, is when you move the map around it, it shows uh, the locations in the uh, repeater or query loop. Um, some of these things I, I, don't, I don't totally know, but I know the settings that we have, let's not do full screen, not do rotate. The settings we have right here are gonna work great. So hit save. Now let's go back to our, let's just refresh here. Nothing's gonna happen because we haven't put our short code in over here yet. So let's grab our short code and let's go back to our bricks editor. Edit that template. Locations archive. And then this is a short code here. So we can go and paste that in. Now we can't forget when we get that error. So we want to type in the custom class we created WP WordPress grid builder content. Uh, dash locations grid. Now hit save. And let's look at this over here. Oops, something went wrong. Something went wrong. This page didn't load Google Maps correctly. See the JavaScript console for technical details. Um, okay. Invalid key map error. I have not seen this error before. I wonder, no, no, no. Uh, let's just clear the cache and try this one more time. Okay. I think it wants to, but it just doesn't quite quite get it done. 
and our load more is no longer working either. So something something's broken. And maybe maybe it's because I have that. Oh, okay. It might be because we're looking at our template. Um, yeah, that, that can be a little confusing. So I'm actually looking at the template, not at the locations archive page. So let's let's look at that instead. Uh, so so to actually look at that, we would go. It would just be location. Okay, we do have the same problem here. Is our is this working? No, this isn't working either. Our load more isn't working. Um, is this working? If I type in Louisville, no, our search isn't working. So altogether, something got seriously broken. Something got seriously broken. Time to investigate. I wonder if something's wrong with my Google Maps key. I've been copying and pasting it a few times, and I, I wonder if I made a mistake with that. So I'm just going to go back into Grid Builder, into that facet, Locations Map, and just paste it in. I, I have it copied right now. I copied it from um, where I was supposed to. Okay, let's save, re index. And let's re refresh here again. There we go. Okay. Now, obviously, we're zoomed in incredibly. We're, so we got one in Louisville. Uh, okay, let's just type. Let's come back here again. So, locations. Why are we so zoomed in here? Our load more is working now. Um, let me just compare the settings I have for the grid. Okay, so we're making some progress. I'm just not sure why. Oops. Okay, remember I had that setting set where uh, filter what's on the page. Um, I, I think there's a few things happening. I'm zoomed in way too far on that facet. So let's go, let's change that so we're not, default zoom is 12. I think that's what I actually have when I was testing it. Let me just make sure. So got that. That looks good. Google Display All Markers. Roadmap is there. I do have points of interest turned on. I guess we can try that. I, I had it turned on originally. My coordinates coordinates are those are all the way I have them. Zoom. Panda searches off. Yeah, all the settings are same. Let's save again. So why does it start so zoomed in? Uh, maybe it's because that's our first. That's our first listing. Is Louisville, and it's not showing all the items on the map. Why would that be? Display all markers is on. Let's just turn map filtering off once. Display all markers. Yeah, display all markers, save. And let's go try this again, refresh. Still just zoomed in. <clears throat> Let me deactivate Louisville. I'm curious if it's gonna to go to Cincinnati. Is that where it's gonna show instead? So let's go to locations. Um, Louisville, quick edit, let's just go draft. Now let's view locations. And now we're out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I wonder if I need to resave all these locations because they might not have saved data in, that's where it is. They haven't saved data into Google Maps yet <clears throat> because that custom field was added after these were created. So go back to all each location. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back and actually stay in, change this back to published. So update, and then I don't know if it would work to just to um, <clears throat> to just you know right click all of these if you have a lot and can you edit and then let's try that. Let's edit, apply. Let's change it to draft, and then change them all to because <clears throat> you might have a ton of locations, 
edit, uh, apply, change status to published. I'm not sure if that will uh, add data into the field versus opening it up, but let's try it. No, it just did those two, okay? So we need to go back and go, we need to just open these all up. You don't even have to, you don't have to do anything um, except this is showing, you do need to check this stuff out. So this is showing, uh, it, it's not pulling in Bremen, it's pulling in some other city, Milwaukee. So if I do click on this here, and now it does bring in Bremen, Indiana, and now, now there we are. So now I can hit update. And Elkhart, so is this gonna bring up, no, this is bringing up something in Dublin, but if I click in here, it'll do the auto search, and it'll bring up Elkhart, Indiana. Now, this is also messing up now. So address line one was supposed to just show that. This is now going to mess up our single location template because it's going to, it's go, we have it set to show, or the plan was to show, you know, address line one and then the city and the state and then the zip. Um, but now it's going to show obviously this whole line and then the city, state, and zip again, although this doesn't have the zip. So keep that in mind. Um, one, one thing you could do is go and change, create a new field for this Google map. And there's a couple, there's a couple values with that. Sometimes it won't show the business name. Well, let me just go show this to you. Um, you'll want to show, and this is on a single, single location. Um, or actually, yeah, that, that, that's what makes sense. So this is a, a business. There's actual several businesses on premise. And so I went and created a, a field for this Google map and I typed in stair zone and then the address. Uh, and then it actually pulled up the Google, uh, Google business listing or Google business profile listing. And you know, it shows stair zone there. If I would just, if I, when I did just have the address in there, it just showed the address up here as the, as a heading as well. So it does make a little more of a richer experience sometimes to go and just make a dedicated field for the Google map. So, and, and you obviously, yeah, you can easily, easily do that. That's not a problem. Okay. <clears throat> but for this training here, I'm not going to go in and change that because that's not, uh, actually, let's just do it. I, I guess it needs to be done anyway. So let, let's just go and do it. I need to create a new field for the Google Maps. So we need to go to Metabox, Custom Fields, to Location, and then right above the address, we're going to add a new field called Google Maps Address. You could do Address for Google Maps. Oh, sorry, text. I was doing that wrong. Uh, address, let's, let's do that. Google Maps. And again, just to keep this in line, so location, location address for Google Maps, uh, everything else, you, you should require that. Now let's drag this above our Google Maps here. And so where did I make this? Location address Google Maps. And so this is now location address for Google Maps. Um, and now I need to change this to pull in you know, this field instead of the first one, or instead of the original one. Location address Let's copy that. Copy that. I think after Let me just paste that in. There we go. Um, and then we can hit update. And now I do need to go through and, and we, we need to resave each, each location. So again, Louisville is no longer um, 
So, and you might wonder, well, why is this still? Why does it still have the old coordinates? It's because it was the coordinate, the longitude latitude coordinates are saved, even though it's now looking at this field here. It's just empty. But as soon as I go in, if I would type in again Nebraska, it will change and update to Nebraska. But we want it to be this place here. We have our full address. And if this would be a, I'd probably want to type in the business name. Um, if it doesn't by default show up on the single location page. I would want to maybe type in the business name here and then it, it will show it most likely if there is a business profile listing it will show that on the Google map but on that template for the location it's still using address line one so we need to go in there and change it to address for Google Maps so that they're both using the same thing all right so let's hit update we just need to go through each of these Since I'm assuming you probably watched the previous video as well, let's go in and just fix that template real quick. So bricks, templates, um, single location, edit with bricks. And now for the map element here, the address, we don't want to, oh, I, that's right, it couldn't even, we could, it couldn't even pull up the d dynamic data because it's uh, in a group. So we actually did, I forgot that that hadn't been filled out. So we'll just skip this back to WordPress uh, and close that. <clears throat> okay, now in the grid builder, I need to update this as well to look at this new custom field. So I'm going to refresh and then here, actually, no, it's still looking at the same field because it's looking at the Google map field, not the um, address for Google maps. Yeah, it needs to be this is what we need, the Google Maps. The address for Google Maps is is the text address, but we actually need the coordinates, longitude, latitude, which is the Google Maps. So I'm going to hit Save Changes just to make sure that we're all good there. And now if I go back to look at locations, there we go. Hopefully that made sense. So we ran into some issues for sure. Hopefully um, this is making sense. And now I, I do want to double check. There was one setting that I was going back on in the uh, grid builder settings about updating locations map behavior map filtering I think so we actually do want that turned on I thought that was causing an issue but we actually do want that turned on so that because if it's not turned on so we have a Louisville Cincinnati Bremen but if I go and if I zoom in outside of Cincinnati it's, it's still gonna stay on this list that they're all gonna stay on that list so even just Indianapolis should be showing up but they're all showing up because that was not turned on it is now so now if I go refresh It'll zoom out, show them all. But now if I go and uh, zoom in to just have Indianapolis, it should update over here where we just have Indianapolis as well. There we go. So it's a little sluggish um, right now anyway. And if I zoom out, then we get more of those in there. Okay, now, remember I told you that this search is something that I did initially, but it's actually a mistake. So let's see how this search works. Let's say, um, let's say I live in what are the towns we have? So we've got Bremen and Elkhart. Let's say I live in Napanee and I'm looking for, I'm gonna zoom out and show everything again. If I let's just go, just go like that. Let's say I type in um, Napanee. I'm curious if there's anything in Napanee. And it just says no, even though Napanee is fairly close to um, Elkhart and Bremen. So there's actually a real simple fix for this we need to change the facet type. So if we go back here to facets, let's go to all facets. This uh, location search, we were using our search here, but what we actually want is geolocate, geolocation. It still functions like a search, but it, it does a couple really awesome things. <coughs>
and it's going to change uh, our options pretty drastically. So let's click geolocation search and then we want to um, change this to custom field and then post field and then what are we going to look at? We're looking for the Google Maps address. This one down here. Uh, not the not the address for Google Maps but the Google Maps um, longitude latitude um, that's what we want Google Maps and then on down here Google again and we need to type in our API key again so let me just go go grab that and all countries it's probably fine to leave that as all countries but I'm just going to change it to United States because I want to save. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if it would use up more resources if if they're if it's searching for locations outside of the United States or not. But I'm just going to leave it as that. Um, you can change, you know, this to different things. I'm just going to leave it as all types. Enter uh, the placeholder here. So you could change that to enter your home. Enter a nearby city. You know, you could change that because it will search for. You can you can search for an address or you can enter in an address, a city, a state. Um, di different things and users location oh yeah you can also yeah have it just there's a button that'll you know look for your actual location with GPS and display that and then this is really cool so show results within a what what radius of that location so let's change it to miles and then depending again what these locations are for you could change that I'll leave it at the default of 25 and let's just hit save and now let's go back over here and refresh and now you can see it says uh, well th this is the cool thing so right now nothing looks different on the map but let's say I type in that, that town I was talking about Napanee Indiana Napanee that brings up you know different listings here if I just want the city maybe it draws a radius and brings up the locations within that radius and obviously you can uh, see the results there and I don't we don't have the links up right now but you could you know click on them and go to the, the, those locations and get those details but that is just phenomenal that's just awesome when I figured that out I was just mind blown I'm super pumped it's so powerful and it really is it really is easy I know we ran into some issues and had to kind of figure some things out but now that it's documented you know it really is is easy to do now we're we're functional now now let's finish up the design to make this look you know polished number one I don't like this view locations on the map it's so obvious so let's get rid of let's get rid of that uh, and I think the easiest way is probably just to Go to the facet and just remove the title under naming here. Let's just remove that and see if it if it removes the title by doing that. No, it still saves it. Oh, that was the search. Um, so maybe I didn't want to do that for the for the search. Let's go to the location map and let's remove the title. Save over refresh there we go now that's gone um, let's let's get rid of uh, let's just go to the default view so there's nothing in there alright show results within 25 miles I actually don't like that oh I can, oh, you can change it here oh that's cool so I can change it to 50 oh that's really cool well, maybe there is value in having it. I, I didn't know that it w that I could change the value there, but that is kind of cool. Like, how far are you willing to drive? Is there anything within? Okay, okay, maybe we'll leave it there. And that that's why I was saying, uh, it back in. So that's the uh, the geolocation facet. Uh, we, we called it locations search because um, that's kind of what we're doing. We're searching, but you know, maybe that should be changed to ge locations. Uh, Geo, that's nah, kind of wordy. Anyway, so down here, 
we can change that minimum and maximum. So I know for sure we don't want to have a minimum. Let's just make the minimum. Let's make it. Let's make it ten miles. Actually, let's just make. Yeah, let's make it ten. Again, different businesses, different uses. You know, one fifty is probably way too much. Um, but you can you can decide what's best. Okay. So I think I was thinking I would remove that, but I actually kind of like it now because um, I didn't know. And you can use up down arrows there. That's really neat. Okay. Enter a location. I do think that wording should be changed. I think it should say enter your location because it sounds like enter you know one of these down here, and that seems kind of weird. So let's go change change that wording. So that's under uh, geolocate. So enter your location. I have mixed feelings about when to capitalize everything and when to leave it as lowercase. Um, for my general rule is for headings that are not sentences, capitalize every capitalize like a title of the, like the title of a book. But for even headings that headings or labels that are kind of a, a phrase to leave it lowercase. But then you get in the case of buttons, where I actually like buttons to be up all uppercase. And in this case here, um, this is a little more difficult to do. Let's get rid of our title here. There's no reason to have the title and then say load more here. So let's go back to our our facets again and our load more facet and just get rid of the title. Very good. And obviously, you would definitely want to change this, the query loop number and how many more it's going to load, depending how many locations you have. So I just made it a minimum number so that we could see how it works. I think now we're ready to finish, go back to our design and, and finish this here. I want it to look a little more like our actual location page, <coughs> which has a drop shadow uh, on the map and you know that you know this button here does not match our brand color so we need to we need to fix that as well all right so there, there are a couple things to do to do um, and remember the map is square here that was not by default 16 by 9 was the default I do think it's better for this kind of a map to be taller uh, and I think square is actually a good a good option. All right, so let's go back to our location here. I'm going to refresh just so we have everything new we're working with. We won't be able to see this stuff, um, but we'll do the best that we can. All right, so let's give this a drop shadow. And I don't remember in our other in our single locations did we give that uh, did we did we use a utility class for that, or do we actually style the drop shadow? <clears throat> And with this here, we actually do get to see the map because the map is an element. It's not a it's not a short code from why is it doing that? Did I not select the type previously? Single. That's that's really weird. Edit with bricks. Uh, this is an element. It's not a short code. It's not a facet. So it looks like we did just style uh, the map. So let's look at that and, and use the same. In fact, we could even use the same class. I think that would be the thing to do. Location, location, body, map. I think that is a, the smartest thing to do. Let's go in here. And I th I'm not sure if we want to style our wrapper or the map itself. Let's try the map itself. So that was a location body map right here. Let's save and refresh. We could possibly do the wrapper. Okay, here's what. So there's some extra white space down there. So maybe we need to go and...
location body map. So there's some other layout here, layout things here too. So it's giving a max width, uh, width of 100%, height. I'm not sure why we're getting that white space down here. So there. Was that part of our outer div? Field set, okay. So this is, uh, this is where the short code is added onto. Just strange. I don't know why there's that. Why there's that space down here? I, mean, I guess it's just is it just margin. Yeah, it's just margin is added at the bottom of. I think it's something added from. Um, WP Grid Builder, yeah, they just add a margin to the bottom. And it just get okay, so it keeps on getting added to it. So, it looks like it probably adds it to, yeah, to everything. I think we just want to <clears throat> zero that out. So maybe the best in minimum width, padding, margin. So I think we'll just add that to to uh, a custom, uh, with custom CSS, we'll just kind of take care of that extra margin that gets added on. Um, so let's just grab field set. I'm not sure if it would work just to have field set margin bottom zero. I'm not sure what field set <clears throat> where all that gets used. Probably would make it would be better to uh, to include these these classes. I guess for last last child, maybe just specifically last child is when we when we don't want it. Well, I guess last child field set. Yeah, we might need to use CSS for both of these. And it, <clears throat> I don't really want margin. I'll, we'll, we'll add that within the builder. I don't want that to really be added anyway. So, okay, let's, let's go to uh, add it with WP Codebox, global CSS. I think we'll call this, uh, we got our image gallery there. I think we'll call this Um, WP grid box overrides grid builder not grid box grid builder uh, WP, yeah so that's fine just like that all right so we have that and I also want to grab sorry I know I keep on kind of going back and forth was that the the selectors that I had chosen I think I just need this um, margin bottom zero. I think is all I need. So I hit save <clears throat> and go back here and refresh. Okay, it is still there. So maybe I do also need. Uh, sorry, I'm still trying to. Dig in. So I guess maybe I do do also need this one here. If I add a comma, and then refresh. <clears throat> Still.
Mars and bottom. Well, I guess we could maybe get more specific by by referencing this class, this custom class. Last child, it really doesn't even matter. I'm not sure this is the right thing to do or not. No. All right, I guess I'll, maybe someone can uh, write a comment in with some some better uh, CSS to to handle that margin bottom. And I'm, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna try one one other thing. So I'll, I'll leave that the way it is. I I was thinking we could try important. That's what I was thinking. We could try important. I don't like doing that. That did work. But what I really wanted to try was maybe just going. Div. Oh, and that's okay. Sorry, I missed that data. That's data grid. Maybe that was my problem. Um. Here, here. This is what I was. What I wanted to do. Grab this. I guess it doesn't show. That's not a facet. That's right. I was thinking, why doesn't it not show on the single locations page? Let's grab this, and it's in a div, and then there's a child div, and then there's a field set that we want to have zero margin bottom. That's what I'm thinking. Let's just try that. So there's a, I don't know if I remember this. There's a div with this class. So div dot this class, and there's another div, then there's a uh, what is it called? Field set. Field set. That's what we want to target. Margin bottom zero. And then let's just comment this out. Temporarily. Hit save. Come back here and no, it does not work. Okay, so we have to go with, I have to go with important. And I guess does, I want, I'm curious too. Does this work with important? No. Okay. Not sure what I was doing wrong, but we will just. Uh, if someone ha has some input on what would be a better way to write this CSS, that would be. Um, yeah, that'd be terrific. So save, and now if I refresh. There we go. Have that cleaned up. Our button is terrible. Let's take care of that. We need to add a link over here. So let's do the button. Let's do the button next. And the button, okay, so <laughs> that is load more facet. We'll need to write custom code for that too because we can't see it here. So location, let's dig into this here. And really, we want all our buttons to look the same, right? So we don't need to worry about using, I don't actually want to use the class I gave this because I want all our buttons to look like our primary button. So button type, button load more. I think what I want to get at is just WPG button is what I want to style. And I want it to look like, like our primary button. So let's start over here. Um, don't want to just do load more. The 
there we go. That's what I want to style. So if I can, uh, let's do a color red. Of course not. Oh, that, that's the text. Oh boy, I don't want to do important if I don't have to for all these things. Um, Man, so I have to do important for all of these. Okay, we'll do it for right now. Uh, I do hope there's a better way to do this. So the, the color is, is not, I don't want it to be red. I actually want that to be, um, I think we made it far primary ultra light is what we were doing. And what about our The border is definitely not, the border isn't, uh, it needs more of a border. So border, radius, um, radius M, okay, and what about, what, how does our hover respond? Okay, let's just start with this here. Let's copy all this. And take it over to WP Code Box. And this is a little tough. Like, is this under WP Grid Builder or is it under Buttons? I guess we'll just keep it under here for now. But depending how many different things you have coming in, maybe it would make more sense to just have a Buttons section. But because I don't expect to be styling buttons from a lot of other plugins, I expect ACSS to just automatically handle them for the most part. So I'm not going to create a separate section just for buttons. All right, so button, da, 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 okay. So then we obviously also need our, our hover. So for that, we'll go like that um, and hover. And then our background color would be var primary hover, okay. I don't know background color. I'm not sure if there's a big benefit or not one way or the other. Okay, save. Let's see how we're doing now. I don't see the hover taking effect. Maybe I didn't add important to the end of that. I didn't. Okay. Still, I'm not getting that hover effect to work. Yeah, why is that not not working? Background color. Maybe I should just go primary hover. That's I think that's right. Let's go background. And there, there it is working now. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Is this is it background color? Or is background for for this? It is background color. The the BTN or uh, utility, yeah, the ACSS utility classes. So maybe someone could could uh, yeah could help out with that a little bit. Why background color versus just background? So. I'll, I'm gonna try it again. It seems like that seems like uh, a weird background color. Save. Let's gotta try this one more time. Refresh. Okay, it is working. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe it just hadn't taken effect yet. So that's working. The clicking. It's working. Cool, cool, cool. Um, now we need to make these clickable links. So for that, we go back into our, our query loop and over on content, we want to click, um, sorry, under heading. The heading needs to be a link. So link to dynamic data 
and it's the post link. And we don't want to open up in a new tab. I'm trying to think what else. I think we can probably leave that blank. We, we could bring in the an ARIA label. Um, but I'll, we'll, we'll just leave it. So save. Come back over here, refresh. And now, if I click on Louisville, cool. Gives me a color, so I can obviously change it if I want to. I click on it. It takes me to that location. Um, we remember we don't have our information here yet because uh, it's in a group and Bricks 1.5 beta has a bug where that's not working correctly. Um, so if I go back to our locations, very good. I think we're good. We got our map here. I can drag around. I can zoom in. Yeah. Um, were there any errors on the page? I did want to check that out. So let's go back. Whoop, whoa, whoa. Let's clear out our grid builder search and just go back to the default locations query. And then is there any, any errors or anything? No, we're good. Um, Oh, one thing, you could make this in, in two or three columns, depending how large it is. And let's add some more spacing in here yet, too. And let's make it, let's make it a two, a two grid. So back here, our locations grid up here. And for that, we are going to use utility classes for this. So grid two. And let's add some gap. Um, maybe gap L and let's try that save and maybe we need to make our font size smaller because um, these names and you know maybe it shouldn't say company name Bremen I guess obviously okay I guess there's value in it saying like headquarters Napanee Headquarters, Cincinnati, Office Branch, Louisville. There could be. I think there is some value in doing that depending on your business. But I think we're going to go back to just giving it the city name here. So let's do. In order to change that, we have to go to the location. So we're done with this. I don't know that we change anything. We'll just say leave. And let's go. Let's close out of this. And let's go to our uh, our, loc our different locations here and change instead of it saying instead of the name being company name then the city let's just make it just a city you know could you could you city and state maybe if there's depending how, how popular the location uh, to me how popular location names are if it's a large city or if it could be confused. If it's a small city that could be confused with a larger city, it definitely would probably make sense to include the state with it as well. I think some of these I got out of order. Okay. And at this point, and at this point, the location name is the same as the title, so. Um, Maybe it would make sense to use the title, but uh, okay. So let's go. Let's view location, and I should have a breadcrumb in here just to go back to all locations. So what I actually wanted to see was this. So now we've got yeah, these three. If I load load more, I've got that one. Then our last one is there. So there's probably too much padding or or, or space in between this. Let's just look at it, inspect. Yeah, there's way too much space in between that. So let's go, we can, I guess we can leave that open. Let's just um, edit with bricks. Go to bricks templates. Location archive. And now let's change this grid from a gap L. Let's just change it to a gap S maybe.
There we go. Now let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's much better. And you could even do three, you know, could even do a three column grid. But we're going to leave it like that because I think that makes sense. And that's it for this for this training. Thanks for watching. Again, if this was helpful, please subscribe. Um, please share the videos with others that are trying to build a, a facet or they're trying to build a page where they can show different locations on a map. Uh, they're not sure how to do it. You know, it does take some premium plugins, but it's definitely it's worth it. There's a lot of value in having a web page or building a web page for a client that can that can do this. Um, and one other thing I'll quickly mention: there is another add-on for caching. Um, I haven't enabled it because I've just been in developing, but I know sometimes this feels a little bit sluggish, and so you know, turning on that caching. Um, should make a big difference with that. All right, thanks for watching. If, you, if this was helpful, please drop a comment below letting, letting me know how you're using this, how you plan to use this. Uh, and again, just um, hit subscribe. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.